So you've maybe heard about cold crashing and you wonder what it is. Well, today we're gonna to talk about that. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the topic of cold crashing and uh, kind of what it is, how do you use it, and apply it into beer making, wine making, um, mead making, really any alcohol making in that regard. So um, I want to first start by saying cold crashing is, at its most basic concept, just taking your alcohol and putting it into a cold chamber. And um, now that chamber can be, you don't want it to be freezing because there are some alcohols that do freeze at certain points, especially if they're not a high alcohol by volume, alcohol in general. Um, so you wanna put it at, like if you were to cold crash something, you wanna cold crash somewhere in the realm of like, I would say 30, we're talking at least in, in Fahrenheit, um, and I'll put Celsius down below, of course, uh, somewhere between like 34 and like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, now, the reason we do that is to keep it from getting frozen. We don't want to freeze our alcohol in that regard. But also, there's a special thing that happens when you cold crash something. When you cold crash a mead or a beer or a wine, what happens is the particles that are in suspension, meaning the things floating around, um, will start to fall to the bottom because they basically become heavier and go to the bottom and it starts to separate out the things that most of the time we don't want within our mead. So that will uh, automatically help your clarity of your mead, but that's not the main purpose we use cold crash, I mean, some people use it for that purpose, but we often use cold crashing to um, do something else. A lot of people will use cold crashing of a mead or beer or wine when they are trying to uh, halt yeast uh, production to a certain point. Now there, I wanna caution you with something. Cold crashing is not the end all be all of stopping your yeast. Um, because all that cold crashing does is it stops them for the moment. If you know anything about like the, uh, um, there's scientific studies done with the, um, there's a specific kind of frog that it can be frozen and basically die and the, its heart stop and then it come back to life when it thaws out. That's basically what yeast do, is they get really cold and they just kind of take a big long nap. And um, the moment that they start to warm back up and get to their operable temperatures, so depending on your yeast, that could be different, uh, they wake back up and they start to do their thing again. So what you need to know is that cold crashing is not an alternative for halting fermentation completely. Can you stop it for a time being? Absolutely. Um, there's, there's some things about it, but the main reason we use cold crashing is to slow down yeast um, where they're at currently, or um, sometimes for clarity reasons. And it's a very, very easy concept because we just take our alcohol, the gallon of mead, wine, beer, whatever we're making, put it into maybe your fridge, something like that, and it, it does it for you. Now, when you do this, you need to leave your container in there to cold crash for, I would say, depending on your end goal, at least three days and maybe even four to six days. Um, if you're just trying to slow your yeast down. In that time, you will find that the yeast will actually stop doing what they're doing their thing. Um, if you were doing, using cold crashing for the sake of, uh, of clarity, trying to clear up your beer, wine, or mead, then you can leave it in for a little bit longer. It doesn't hurt your alcohol to leave it in a cold crashing chamber because it doesn't affect the flavor. Honestly, it doesn't, the cold does not change your flavors. Um, if you were to like freeze it, then I think you'd have some different things. Um, it does, all, all it really does is just fulfill that need to stop yeast or to, to provide clarity. Now, when you put it in there, you wanna make sure and um, mark down when you first put it in, because I think a lot of us, really especially me, I will forget when I put something in something into my refrigerator and uh, that will you know, cause me to not know how long it's been in there. So write down that information. There are some little cheater things I want to talk to you about today with cold crashing. Um, and I'll talk about my temperature controlled freezer here in a second and how I use it. But uh, you can use your fridge. You can use any chamber that gets to that realm of 34 to like, let's say 40 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. 
but it is a very, very simple concept and you can use it to your advantage. Let me caution you with something. If you only cold crash your mead and then um, let's say, let's, let's go with this. I, let's say I've cold crashed my gallon of, of mead in this example and then I pull it off and I have it like one of these back here. Let's say I cold crashed it and I just set it back up there, up there. If you cold crash and do that, if there's any more sugars for the yeast to feed on and they have the capabilities to feed on them again, they'll just do it again when they wake back up. So what you need to do is you need to cold crash, move into a new container, you'll have less of a yeast population. Now, emphasis on the word less. There is still a yeast population within your mead. Do not believe that by cold crashing and then racking into a new container that you have completely get, gotten rid of um, all the yeast. Because if you believe that and then you put more honey on top, guess what? Yeast come back, they start to do their thing and you uh, have more fermentation going. And I will speak from experience that I have cold crashed something one time thinking that I had gotten rid of all the yeast. I back sweetened and then um, I added my honey to it to uh, sweeten it, back sweeten, like I said, then bottled it, and guess what? The yeast woke back up because cold crashing is not the end, uh, does not get rid of all the yeast. So do not use it in that method. It is not for be ridding of all the yeast. If you are wanting to do that, you need to stabilize your mead if you're trying to halt fermentation completely. And that would be potassium sorbate, potassium metabisulfite. Um, which you can find at your brew shop, Amazon, all those things. But uh, you can use cold crashing to halt that fermentation at a certain point. Let's say that you have started your wine or your mead in this case, um, and you got it up to 1.090 gravity. Then you got it down, you let it ferment to 1.020 gravity. And you said, all right, that's where I want it to stop. If you want to halt fermentation for the moment without trying to use sorbate and metabisulfite, put it in a cold crash chamber. That will slow the yeast down because they will not be able to ferment at a certain temperature. And then you can, uh, from there, decide if you want to put sorbate, metabisulfite, those things in. So, um, but in that case, if you just took it back out of the cold crash chamber and put it back up like here, it's just going to start fermenting again if the yeast had the capability. Now that opens a new wormhole of a topic. If you want to back sweeten something, there's a whole other method. I'll make another video about that because I think it's important that we know how to do that safely. Um, but there is method to this madness. Please do not just throw things in and then just bottle it and walk away because there have been many bottle bombs created that way. And I, last thing I want is for you to have an issue with that. But the idea of cold crashing is very simple and um, I think it's important that we know how it works. So uh, I, I do want to talk to you now about some alternatives. You can use your fridge. You can also use a, uh, a freezer to be able to cold crash your things. So I bought myself a, a freezer and I'll show like a video of this while I'm doing it. And within this freezer, I have this, uh, right now it's being used as a actual freezer because this is the coronavirus season and I needed a bunch of space for my um, food. But you can see here that this, it has a temperature controlled like little uh, thing on it that plugs into the freezer portion. With that, I can set the freezer to go to any temperature, ranging from 20 degrees all the way up to like, I think 80 degrees. So obviously 80 degrees, it's not really even on. But you can use that as a cold crashing chamber. You can also use it as a fermentation vessel chamber for a specific uh, like temperature freezing. But stuff like that's very helpful. At the device, I'll tag it down below if you wanna purchase that. But that device is really pretty simple and um, it wasn't too expensive. So hope you have uh, learned something about cold crashing. It is a very helpful thing to do. I do not want to dissuade you from doing it. I just want to caution you with some of the myths about it. If you cold crash something, then you are not, there, there are things that can happen within that more than just halting the yeast for the moment. So thank you guys for watching. If you want to support me and the channel, um, check out the links down below. Everything you do helps support the channel, especially liking and subscribing. If you want to see more content, I would love to be able to give you more content. Um, so go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll see my stuff as it's posted. But I've enjoyed getting to do this. I'll be back with some more content, especially talking about some things like back sweetening, carbonation. Um, you know, of course, this one is was cold crashing, so there will be more content to come. But I hope you've learned something. Share this with your friends if you want. 
and uh, go make some uh, alcohol. So have a great day and cheers.